so it does flow but they tend to be sort of flood rivers so they're very seasonal um, well this particular one if you go up towards the sand and the Sabi River that you'll find is a lot more um, a lot more sort of permanent water source so you can just see the tracks going up the left hand side here so those are fairly fresh I actually should have come straight here this morning but I don't know why I didn't but there we go you can see them walking straight up the road in front of us so hopefully we can find this leopard just going that way um, so the thing is with the Mulawati is that the Mulawati unfortunately is just a flood river so as soon as we get good rains then we will get flowing otherwise it doesn't flow too much at all okay now you're still going up this way which is good 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 hopefully whichever leopard this is it decides just to stay near or on a road because that will certainly make my life a lot easier which it hasn't done already. Okay, wait, there it is. Now from there, where do you go? Do you go back into the Mulawati again? This leopard is confused. It's going all over the place. So now I'm just trying to check in towards the Mulawati here if it doesn't come down this way. Um, see following on foot is always a lot easier because you can step by step it in a vehicle you sometimes miss a track which I think I must have because I don't see any tracks actually coming down here since she's not lying right here is she that we just missed it <laughs> sometimes that's what happens you're so busy looking for the track and the leopard sitting right in front of you sometimes it does just listening to the birds they seem okay. I thought they were starting to make a bit of a noise, which could indicate that there was some sign of something. But it seems as though everybody's all right there. Okay, let's go back up to Vulture's Nest then, because it doesn't look like anything came this way. Sometimes also they'll cross on a section that's not on the sand, and then it can be a little tough to actually figure out where they went. But the last track I had is here. It's still, I think, going northwards. Yes, still north. There, 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 there. Ah, still going up the road. Okay, so we've still got them at least going this way, which is good news. It means that hopefully this leopard has not gone into the Mulawati from here because where we are now, the road no longer continues up the Mulawati, which is not ideal because it would be a lot easier to find this leopard if the road did continue up the Mulawati if, especially if it's gone in that direction you just drive the whole way in it like we've been doing this morning already to find these tracks okay they don't go that way do they go this way Carolina, you're wondering, do any animals have male and female tracks that differ? Uh, in terms of the actual sort of structure of these th feet and things like that, no. But there's a lot of animals that have male tracks that are larger. There's slight little differences. Um, so lion and leopard particularly, you can tell by just the shape of the feet, whether it's male or female. So that does help. But in terms of actual differences beyond what the foot structure looks like no not really so there's not really too much of a difference in that they'd have you know a different toe or a different paw uh, there goes these tracks so I don't know how I missed those the first time but anyway um, but you will find like with male lions they tend to have quite an angular back pad so it almost comes down um, whereas you'll find with leopards males they have very circular back pads whereas the females are more angular so there's little differences like that and then obviously size is a big thing so male elephants male hippos male buffalo um, leopard lion all of these animals their paw sizes are different according to um, their size Where did these tracks go? Um, seem to have lost them now. They seem to not be here anymore, which is not good. 
I was hoping that they would still walk along the road a little bit longer, but I don't see them anymore. I mean, I'm, maybe what's this? And now that's hyenas that are there. So this leopard has turned somewhere. We're going to have to try and just figure it out. And the only way to do that is probably to be on foot. Now I'm going to just turn the car around and just have a little look around on foot. And while we do that, I believe Taylor is at a zebra crossing. It's finished now. That was just the end of the zebra crossing. There was a couple of them and one wildebeest that crossed the road, but they're in Bivol's Hook now. Um, I don't know about those leopard tracks. They veered off the road going in sort of a northerly direction. And then I had a look. I can't see anything crossing, but I can't see any tracks coming back either. It's hairy ass mystery. So I just want to go back to this junction over here. Uh, that's with, well, where the Bivol's Hook sign is and see if I can figure out where the animals have come from. Otherwise we're going to go back to those elephants. I don't really like chasing leopards around and then sort of coming up unsuccessfully. It's never fun. Let's see. There's just been a lot of vehicles also driving around in this area so there are not very many tracks. Yeah, so there was, a, and there's definitely a male leopard that came out of Buffalo's Hook came from the side and came down this way. So I think, I really think that Mvula was around here as well. And I wonder, oh, come on Wendy. Uh, I wonder if these leopards didn't sort of meet at the same point over here and Mvula went that way and whoever w was coming up from Galago ran in a different direction. Definitely a very big leopard that walked down here. So interesting, very interesting. Now, NC, you're wondering if there could have been a female leopard walking with Mvula, and maybe, well, there was a, there were female tracks going off that way. Now, I know Nchila has been hanging around, and we sort of figured out, Tristan was telling me that those female leopard tracks that we see often near the gates and near Sydney's dam, it's belonging to uh, Nchila. Mvula is not necessarily mating at the moment, he doesn't seem to be marking territories, but don't let that old man fool you. I reckon if he had the opportunity to mate with a female leopard, he's not going to say no to it, so I think he could every now and then. But if Tingana is around, of course, he's going to take preference. I'm just looking here. I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's so confusing. Let's go to the elephants. I don't want to be confused by leopards today. My brain is too tired to, to chase these ghosts. Just be easy, just sit on a tree in the open or on a termite mound or just be on the road, please leopards. Okay, we'll go, well hopefully the elephants will still be there. We'll just check that termite mound. Now that I've said please be on a termite mound, I better check all of them in case, you know, there is one waiting for me and then I overlook them. It's actually better, I find, driving down Gallego Shortcut from the boundary because it's a lot steeper this way and it gives you an opportunity to scan sort of your surroundings. It's obviously difficult when you're driving up a hill. You don't get to see as much. So I'm just going to be like a meerkat and just look from left to right or right to left. Constantly scanning. Now, Tipane, you're wondering if the animals are close to any cities or towns. Uh, no, not actually, not exactly here. We're quite far away. The closest town, the proper town, is Hutspreit. I'm talking about one where you have a post office and, you know, all that type of thing. Probably a city hall. There's a, there's a city hall. Yeah, there must be one in Hutspreit. Anyways, so Hutspreit is probably the, the closest. We're about an hour and a half from Hutspreit. So it's not too far away. Uh, there's lots of sort of villages around though, sort of informal settlements, um, but nothing sort of too official. And the biggest city is Nelspreit. It's very far away from us. Uh, and of course Johannesburg is about a six hour drive from here. Okay, so our elephants were down on this road. Where did they go? Let's see, maybe they've just fed a little bit in this side. Mm. And it's that terrible time of the year where it's a change of season. It's warming up, but it's also still cold. So if you come 
on safari around this time, bring chapstick or lapas. It's so important. So here are the Ellie tracks. I think I'm going that way. Now, David, you're wondering if it ever gets cold enough that we get frost. I have yet to see frost in the Sabi sand. I don't think it quite gets to that level. Uh, where I'm from, though, I often talk about it. I'm from the eastern cape of South Africa, so the southeast coast. I used to, do, in winter, do many safaris in the frost in the morning. It was horrible. It was so cold. How did those elephants just disappear like that? It's ridiculous. Animals are not on my side today. It's fine. I'll remember that, animals. Remember when you want to be on camera and you just, you know, putting on a show, I won't show you to anyone. Not tracking, I definitely won't do that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know where that elephant has now gone. Maybe it went back down Gallagher shortcut. Because there's nothing here. Can you see anything, Seb? Just it's vanished. It's burrowed. It's gone into a termite mount. It's too cold. Okay, we'll turn around here. So many nice trees, lots of bird beans. And they've all got their lovely green leaves. It's really are standing out at the moment. It's windy, so we need to just push a few trees out of the way when we want to turn. Uh, also, I did give Wendy a stern talking to, but I don't think it's really worked. She's sort of like the, um, the child that doesn't listen. You always have one of those. I was that child. My mom would tell me something and my siblings something and they would all listen and then I would do the complete opposite. <laughs> Wendy does that. Perhaps it's payback. Okay, so our friend the Ellie popped out over here and then went down. I'm so sorry elephant. Maybe the elephant is teaching me a lesson. Perhaps it said that is the last time that I be turned down for leopard footprints. I'll show you Taylor. I'll just vanish now and you won't get to see me at all. I think that's what's happened. Or oh, it's just gone into the drainage line. Let's see. Bounce, bounce, bounce. How does one call an elephant? Hey, Seb, Seb do you know? No, I also saw it. Now we're now we're doubting ourselves if we actually we didn't imagine it. No, I definitely saw that elephant. I heard it as, and there were footprints. Maybe it was Dumbo. Perhaps Dumbo popped in to visit and it's now flown away. That's amazing. Just shows you. And even though the vegetation has thinned out so much, it's still possible for these animals to disappear. Well, if we don't find this elephant, we might have to pop into the hyena den there. Well, I reckon at this rate, though, those hyenas would have up and moved in, suitcases on their shoulders, and, yeah, and moved on. <laughs> oh, I love I love the bush. I always say the bush has got the greatest sense of humor. It's uh, it tests your patience like you have absolutely no idea. Now, Douglas, you're wondering if I've had a chance to go and admire the new hyena cubs. I haven't, so maybe today will be the day. We'll have a look at them. I don't actually even know how old they are. I, I keep asking Tristan, and I, he I keep either missing his answer or we just get lost in topic. And then I don't know because, like I said, I was trying to watch them on screen, but it's very, very difficult to, of course, of course, gauge when you're looking just at the screen. And Megan just said apparently they're around a month old. Yeah, I didn't think that they were very, very old just yet. Okay, let's go into the hyena. I can't believe that elephant's just vanished. How rude! You have to go find my friends from yesterday. Then they were nice. And there's baby hippos. Oh, they were so sweet. I'm not right over the stump. Well, it's not a stump, it's a big root because I've tried to take it off before and then I realized it was coming out of the ground and I'm not Hercules. I won't be able to move it. Is there anyone home? No. <laughs> oh, nature, you're so hysterical. It's fine, I'll get you back. There's not even a sign of a hyena just yet, but we'll go all the way around. I don't see any adults. The one laying outside the den. Ntima, I'm home. Where are you, little girl? Lots of bones. And I'm sure they're all bones from that buffalo carcass. It's actually not too far away from here. They've been brought back and the little ones will be chewing on them. Okay, we'll go through here. 
I know the team does like to lay on the other side. Let's have a closer look. We've just got to navigate all the way around. Whoa. Hi ho, Silver! Yeah, that sometimes also helps to get over the branches. It's like the elephants have been through here. And now, Jenny Animation, you're wondering how old that buffalo kill is that I was talking about, that I suspect the bones have uh, sort of, all well, the carcass where the bones have been brought from. I'm trying to remember, it was last year sometime, if I'm not mistaken, towards the end of the year, or begin, no, it was last year, I don't think it was the beginning of the year. Oh, was it? No. It was, I think that one was from when we first discovered it, sorry, I'm just trying, I'm just thinking to myself, I think that was a sighting when we sort of realized that there was something wrong with the lions and we noticed that some of the females didn't look too great and that the youngsters, it was around the same time sort of with brain finding that one cub that unfortunately passed on and couldn't walk anymore. I think it was around there, I remember having that sighting and I panicked because one of the lioness's legs caved in and I said it looks like she's got hip dysplasia and of course we realized it wasn't it was the white muscle disease so it was around then so when did that happen was that February end of January beginning of February I think that was of this year goodness time flies it felt like that was just the other day okay so no hyenas sadly for us <laughs> And the birds are even flying away from me today. Oh, Wendy, you are in low range. You should not be doing this. I'm so sorry, Megan. Please, can you say that again? Oh. There we go. Now, GDH, hello. You said that perhaps the bush realizes that we need to catch our breath and that's why it's being so quiet. Possibly, that's definitely the case. I mean, like I said, that's how, that's how the bush is really. Some days are fantastic. I mean, how was my drive, first drive back? It was amazing. But I also thought it was too good to be true, to be honest. Uh, I don't know why, every time I come back to work, all the animals run away. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe I must run away too. No, I won't be running away. Uh, I like to annoy everyone here. <laughs> it's like a little side job. Okay, so hyenas failed us. Elephant flew away. Leopards, or someone's just walking around with leopard prints under their shoes and playing games with us. Let's go down Vuyatela Access, and then let's go up Aubrey Road, Aubrey's Road, and then back towards Biffles or Cut Line. And maybe that, those leopard tracks that we had, they did a sneaky and they actually veered off into the bushes. Uh, I actually don't know. We'll see if we can get any birdies around here. This rate, we're going to have to start playing the Franklin game. I think that's going to be the only thing. Well, maybe we'll try and go find some of those spike thorn flowers. Oh, you know what else has uh, started to get flowers on them? There's a, hang on, there's an African grey horn, but where are you going to land? Land, please, please don't carry on flying. Please give me something to talk about. Okay, it's around the corner. We'll see if it'll stop again. Is the scented podicacias have started getting their flowers. I found one at uh, at uh, Chitwa Dam. It was beautiful. I did have one and then pricked my finger this morning, so I threw it on the ground. I was very angry with that plant. You can see them, but they're flying. I mean, otherwise, we're going to stop and look at a forktailed drongo if it doesn't fly away from me too, because the African great hornbills they seem to be on the go constantly. Hang on, there they are. And we have to find a gap. Are you going to sit still? No, one's already flown on. There's too many trees. It's a hard one here. And if I go, there's a gap. There we go. Oh. <laughs> can you believe it? As you said that, you can see it flying in the far distance. Oh, it's just landed. Let's see if we can. Oh, there we go. There, there it was. That was the forktail drongo. Please don't fly forktail drongo. I know that you are very good at flying about and doing circles in the air and catching all fantastic things, but please just sit still for like two seconds. Thank you. You are very kind. I hope that you do not get eaten by any other raptor birds today because you are very, very kind to us. 
You can't really see that it's a fork tail drongo other than the fact that it has the fork in its tail. It's gone numb. You can really see it's red eye. Oh, there's a, what's this, a yellow-billed hornbill down right down here, close to us, in the grass. Okay. Do you see that one? Now, just Jules, you said how much you love the birds. Uh, I think it's a little bit to the right. Oh, there we go. Sorry, to the left. Uh, they, it is great when they stick around for long enough. Birding is very hard. I actually find birding a lot easier here on Safari Live because you can all see through the camera. It's so difficult when you've got guests in your car because you'll point up to a tree and you'll go, over there, look at that, and then you, you'll only have three out of the six people that can see the bird that you're talking about, and the rest of them have no idea. <laughs> and then you're trying to go third branch on the left from the bottom and trying to guide people in, and it becomes exceptionally difficult, of course. And now that hornbill has gone into the long grass. I don't blame that hornbill, though. It's got a valid excuse for disappearing. As you saw, it was staring down onto the ground. There must be quite a few uh, insects down there, too. So I think that's what that one was doing. Come on, birdies. Come on, animals. Where are you all today? I'm going to have to cover my car in molasses, I think. And maybe the animals will come out, even if we just collect insects that way. And then we can have a look at them. Sneaky animals. Right, so Tristan has been walking around doing who knows what. But let's go back across to him so he can tell you a nice story. Well, we've been trying to track this leopard who's just up and down everywhere. There's tracks, I went, because they go back towards the Mulawati, and there's just literally footprints of leopards all over the place. So it looks like Tumba and Tandi that have been walking all over the area here. I mean, obviously it could be Hussan and Shongile, but it looks more to me like Tandi and Tumba. It's in the similar area where we've been seeing Tumba quite a bit, so to me it looks like him like I say I could be wrong though but it's interesting how the tracks just turned around on the road so we were following them up Nyala Road south and they kind of just disappeared and I thought maybe it cut into one of these drainage lines but I'll show you now what happened with the tracks I marked them off here but effectively he was walking towards me now and then right here he just turned around and went that way so he's out on the road Tundi's tracks come and then they cut into there so the two of them are somewhere in this general vicinity I've walked all over there there's just tracks up and down everywhere on the banks of the Mulawati difficult to see where they've actually gone because some of the tracks are old some of them are fresh so it's going to be a tough time to find them I just want to watch this nest in case they ended up going a little bit further north but most certainly the last track that I have is heading that side for both of them so We'll just follow these, follow vultures' nests a little bit. Maybe we get lucky and they pop out here somewhere. But I have a funny, sneaky suspicion that they're all in this, well, both of them are in this drainage section behind the dam wall of Gari Dam. This leads straight up to Gari Dam. So I think that's where they are. I've walked all over here. Like I said, there's just tracks. Whichever pathway I take, there's a track for a leopard at the moment, which is great in some ways, but also quite difficult in others because with winter and the way the conditions are and the sandy puffy soil the tracks can last for quite a long time the only saving grace is we've had quite a bit of wind so the wind just helps to be able to kind of check everything and make sure that they're not got too much on the top but these tracks are from early this morning all of them are fresh 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 they still got a glazed look to them Squirrel's alarm calling on my right hand side. I'm just going to roll back. Where are you looking, squirrels? You can just see them there. So both of them are making quite a bit of noise. They're looking off the edge. There you go. That's them there. See the tails going? Now unfortunately squirrels are not the most reliable when it comes to leopard tracking. You find that these guys shout for anything. There's a breeze, there's a rustle in the grass, they start to make noise. So they're not great, but you can use them with kind of leopard tracks and just check the area because sometimes you'll get lucky and there will actually be a leopard somewhere here. But they're facing on the other side of the tree by the looks of things. So I might just do a little loop past there and just check if there isn't any sign of something. 
And the problem is with them up at the top there like that, they often can see again, as much like the baboons this morning, can see quite a long way. There is a termite mound here. Well, certainly something has upset them. Senzo, you see anything? Makeup girl, you say you've never heard a squirrel make an alarm sound. Well, here we go. We'll try and stop a little bit closer so you can hear it. Hopefully they won't run away. They generally are quite fixated on what their alarm calls, so they don't always move when you come through. But I'm just checking because they seem very upset about something. Wouldn't it be nice if a little leopard popped its head up? Oh, they've run now. So they were just on this branch over here, but they've just moved off. I was hoping they were going to stay there, but they seem to have moved at this stage. And no leopard that I can see anywhere here. It is so thick though, that it is potentially that there could be a leopard right by us and we just can't see it. it hmm. Oh, they seem to have calmed down a bit now. Oh, well, let's carry on. Like I said, it's very thick in here. It's going to be almost impossible to follow anything through this. I remember once trying to follow elephants here, and it was it was a disaster trying to keep up with them. In this, they really just move around all over the place, and it becomes near impossible to follow them. And that's a big grey animal. You can imagine something like a leopard, how difficult that will be. I'm just trying to get it so that I can get my aerial through without having Senzo to drop it down and for us to lose signal. Careful Senzo. Sharp thorns everywhere. It wouldn't be leopard tracking if it wasn't for sharp thorns. They always are part of the process. safely negotiated back onto the road and there we go okay well really you're asking who's my favorite female leopard well Tundi is my favorite that we see here so she is my favorite but uh, yesterday I think Shongile captured many a heart even more than what she probably has before just given that she stood up and she really tried her best to kind of front up to Tandi who's a bigger female by a long way if you looked at the two of them together you saw that Tandi was much larger and bulkier so I think Tandi is but Shongile is fast becoming a close second unfortunately the, my favorite favorite female that of the younger generation we don't actually see here She's, uh, her name is Tiani and she's a little bit to the west of us but she was my kind of favorite young female behind um, Tandi but now unfortunately we don't see her so Shongile I think is have, gonna have to replace that now we've got some dwarf mongoose so it's not the predator we're looking for but they are still predators that we get in this particular area and you find them sitting often on these mounds just absorbing some sunshine so as soon as there's a bit of sun these guys are there and just trying to warm up and I don't blame them this morning was so cold and you can imagine a little one like that or a little animal like that must get freezing during the night so a bit of sun bathing in the morning to warm up is definitely in order and this particular termite mound is always popular with these dwarf mongoose I see them here most mornings and they are lying up and it's a nice big grouping of them business as they are called as a collective noun a nice business of mongoose that sit on top of our termite mounds and they then absorb the sunshine and play around and groom each other and just generally get ready for the day you can see a bit of yawning going on very typical of anything waking up really but they are super cute little animals I really have a soft spot for these guys so I believe a lot of you agree that they are very cute and especially when they start grooming themselves and they wrestle around it's always funny because sometimes it starts as grooming and then it gets a little bit more kind of play fighting and eventually then they end up rolling down in a ball it all is quite something to watch so <laughs> I always like spending time with these guys they're up to something all the time the thing is though is if they're out and about like that it's highly unlikely that a leopard is 
walking around very close by because if these guys had seen a leopard they would have been bolted into their mound and wouldn't have come out for some time so that leopard must be more towards the Mulawati side which unfortunately is going to be very difficult because the vulture's nest now goes away from the Mulawati where we are and you can't see too much here so we're just going to have to hope and pray that one of these leopards is just somewhere out and about that we can actually see it from the road section or we get lucky and that we hear an alarm call and we can get a bit more of a pinpoint area for the Mulawati because it is a long stretch and it is seriously difficult to negotiate inside there. It's not an easy section to drive and to drive aimlessly through there is going to just end up in flat tires and poor rusty getting hurt. Now you can hear that the wind is just starting to pick up a little bit now so hopefully it's not going to be anything like what we've experienced the last two days and then it drops down because the wind is what's been making it very cold. The sun has been quite warm but as soon as that wind comes up it's just got this icy chill and that will be because of the snow on the mountains. There was snow in the Drakensberg so this cold wind comes off the plateaus and off the escarpment and then down into the valley when we get these cold fronts that arrive so that it comes from the southwest the cold front and the wind and then picks up along that mountain range and that's why it ends up being such a cold wind now you're asleep <laughs> how cute is that Anna Marie you say these mongoose look so very soft well Anna Marie they do don't they I've actually have held a dwarf mongoose they are very soft little things and they certainly take care of themselves they're always grooming and making sure the coat is in good condition so they are quite soft and also very sedate this morning there's a bit of yawning and, and certainly lots of sleeping going on there one there is completely passed out over the mound it's kind of flopped itself so the one right in the middle in the center of all of them is flopped itself over the mound and look at that it almost looks as though it's no longer alive the way that it's sleeping but it most certainly is <laughs> have you woken up now excellent very cool right let's leave our little dwarf mongoose to themselves and carry on on vulture's nest and see if we don't get lucky with something here I still think that these leopards are not far away given that they were seen at the dam I'm pretty sure they're somewhere here and somewhere in this immediate vicinity. It's just a matter of finding that exact point. And while I do that and while I search around and hope for the best, let's go back to Taylor McCurdy and see where she's been and what she's been up to and whether or not she's had any luck of her own. I'm so confused as to actually what's happened around here last night. We picked up female leopard tracks coming from Vuyatela access side, uh, sort of just before Aubrey's road, then going back towards Gallagher Pan side. Then I've still got those male leopard tracks that we were following earlier that came from Buffalo's Hook and, and went along the fire break. And then I also had male leopard tracks going southwestish down Aubrey's. I don't know. So I initially thought, okay, maybe it's the same. I'm confused. I really. Let's go down Handy Patch. Might as well, here. Yeah. Let's go have a scratch around there. I think this is. I, this has to be. It's his turf. He likes it. I know we've seen Hosanna a couple of times. Really got a particular favorite from all the the big male leopards, the territorial boys in this area. So let's just just in case, let's quickly pop down Aubrey's. Maybe we must change a pile of planes. Uh, as I'm sure these leopards are here. I, I don't think distance having to the thicket just out of view and because there's tracks everywhere it's so hard to tell which ones were laid down first uh, because we haven't had much wind the wind is starting to pick up now though again yay 
and uh, so uh, last night obviously it was quiet and calm so it's quite, quite difficult to try and figure it out and it's not uncommon for leopards to go over their same tracks three or four times you know if it's a big male trying to follow up on a scent and we typically see it with male lions a lot when they're trying to track the the females the prides uh, they'll come back they'll double back a quadruple back over their tracks again like what we do when we're tracking if we've missed something and uh, if they've missed a scent you know they'll come back and they'll do loops so I think that's maybe also what's going on and, and because they ha there were four we saw four different leopards in one sighting and we knew that there was somebody else lurking in the bushes too with all the or with Tristan with all the animals alarming around him you know that that would have caused quite a, a stir and would explain all the chaos in, in terms of footprints. Tingana's probably gone around uh, making sure that there isn't any unwanted males in his territory. Maybe Mvula was attracted by all the commotion and also came in to inspect. I, I just can't see that all of these tracks are just from Hosanna. We know Tingana's gone east into Torchwood. It's so difficult. I wish we had cameras everywhere on the property. We need them set up so that we can try and figure out who's walking around where. I'm going to say, they probably, you know, could quite easily have five or six different leopards on this property at one time at, at all. Hello. Are you going to sit there? Please sit there, Hornbill. A yellow billed Hornbill just landed next to the car. Now it's gone. Maybe we must just look at trees today, I feel like, because they're not going to run away from us. So disheartening. When the birds don't even want to play along, I don't really know what to show you anymore. <laughs> ah, come on, leopard. Step into the road or move in the long grass so that we can spot you. Mm. Now, James, you're wondering what is the most uh, aggressive territorial dispute I've seen amongst leopards. And I've just got to remember the names. I I've seen Masha Bernie and Shavona Kela. I think it was. Shavona Kele. So you know Shavona Kele. Which was a, a, he used to be the dominant male and then Masha Bernie took over from this is in the southern sands. I've seen them have a fight and and Masha Bernie sat at the base of the tree uh, or they'd box quite a bit and then they spent quite some time together but obviously Mashabeni had this other leopard pinned up in a tree that was quite exciting and then I had a really cool sighting one day of Mandlev and it might have been Shavona Kele again actually because we used to see him quite often I can't remember who it was with now it was when I just started working at Sabi so I was driving <whistles> boundary going Woo, what are we gonna find and the next one I'm like oh leopard cool walking across the road but marching I'm like, okay, hang on, you know, territorial patrol, but taking it to a whole nother level. And then the next minute, this leopard stood up on its back legs. And there was another, another big male leopard. Now, um, Mandlev is the son of Mbavala or Vin Diesel, which is the contender uh, for one of the biggest leopards in the sand. It's between him and the Anderson male. But he's not small, he's really big. And then they had a box as well, but Mandlev hit the older boy, Shavona Keller, and then he went running. So those were pretty cool. I'm trying to think. I haven't really seen any hectic disputes since I've been here. What did I say I was going to do? A pile of planes. So those are those are quite amazing. I've seen Little Bush and Warthog Wallow have a fight before. That was that was pretty cool as well. Um, Little Bush is not yeah. Little Bush is Mandlev Mvula's mother, and she's a feisty one. I always talk about her. See if there's any left tracks going down here quickly. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if there are. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to think. I think actually that fight might have been the worst one out of them all. I just can't remember. I, you know, it's amazing how you forget things and you really have to sit and think about all these different sightings. Especially when you don't speak about them for quite some time. But I'd like. I think. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm still sure that. Well, we haven't really heard much about quarantine. I don't know where he's been, but I'm really hoping that quarantine pushes, keeps pushing sort of uh, to the north from his traverse and starts encroaching on Tingana's territory. They've had a couple of altercations before, but I think that would be a very impressive battle to see in the next year or so.
if quarantine come does come this side and that'll be crazy but Tristan's been guiding for years and years and years and years and years and he's probably seen many leopard fights in his day especially working in the sands for such a long time so let's go across to him and see what his most aggressive encounter with two leopards was and who they were well Taylor it's quite interesting because prior to yesterday I hadn't actually seen females come to physical blows. I've seen them growl at each other, hiss at each other, go quite crazy around each other, but never actually physically come to blows when it comes to the females. But obviously Shongila and Tandi yesterday really came to, to it. So I think in terms of females, yesterday was probably the most intense fight I've seen between them. But in terms of males, whew, I've seen quite a few now. It's, I've been lucky in that I've seen a lot of the big boys stand off with one another and really go after each other. Um, I've seen Tingana Anderson, which was, funny enough, a, a tamer than I thought it would be. The two of them really just jogged along next to each other. Lots of vocalizing, hissing, growling, staring at one another, really giving each other a hard time. So those two didn't actually get very aggressive. The one that used to get very aggressive was Mufufunyan. He used to go crazy if he saw another male leopard. I saw him and Mvula have a big scrap the one day, which was quite intense. I've seen down in the south, Shavona Kele, he had a scrap with an unknown male that came out of the Kruger, which was also quite cool to watch. So those two were probably the most aggressive. Um, I'm just trying to think who else I've seen go at each other. Uh, Anderson, who else? He also had an altercation with somebody else, but I can't remember. Ah, now I remember is Lamula. And actually, we're not 100% sure what happened there because Lamula was never seen after that day, but Lamula had a warthog kill and Anderson came in and just smashed him and literally came in, took the warthog, chased him off. There was lots of vocalizing and salivating and they came to blows and Lamula had a nice big cut. And then the last we saw was Anderson on the warthog, Lamula starting to move south a little bit and then the next, that was the end of it. He was never seen again. So I don't know if Anderson went after him from there and Anderson had quite a few cuts and scrapes and scars when we next saw him. So I wonder if he maybe just didn't get involved. I don't think anybody ever confirmed what happened to Lamula or found him, but he was definitely also went missing after that altercation. But that was quite intense. There was definitely a lot of growling and hissing and carrying on. And, and like I say, a bit of a physical blow that were delivered too. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing driving around the bush in the thickets. Well, I'm just coming to check. This little section of the Mulawati, we never check down here. We never look properly. So it's a worthwhile place just to come and have a little scratch. And you never know what could be lurking. There could be something sitting right here. And we have been driving around all morning and yet it's here. Well, and what we do see is a yellow-billed hornbill actually. It's, so it's not a cat, but our yellow-billed hornbill is looking ever so delightful in the sunshine. Just sitting, having a bit of a groom. Now hopefully it will turn its beak and we'll be able to see its beautiful yellow color. Now don't put your head that side. Oh, there we go, that's better. A bit of cleaning going on. Must have had a meal recently. I often find these guys, once they've had something to eat, they'll then fly up onto a branch like this and they rub their beak on either side so that they can clean up everything, get rid of any bits of exoskeleton if it was a beetle or if there's a grub, any bits of its body fluids that might be stuck on the beak and just make sure the beak's in good condition. But I'm surprised that this bird's got its mouth open like this. Generally you don't see their mouths open like that unless it's quite hot and that's when they'll practice gulaf flutter. So maybe it's had a bit of a morning of interaction with another hornbill. Sometimes you'll find they'll fight over territory and it's built up a bit of heat and that's why the mouth is open like that. Or beak should we say is open like that. Strange. Always got a blocked nose. Snazzy, you say it's such a cool bird. They are cool birds. I like hornbills. They've got a lot of character and they, they're they not the brightest bird, make no mistake. You often find them, if you've worked at any of the lodges, you will have a story of a hornbill pecking at its reflection so it sees itself and because they're quite territorial, it will try and chase off this reflection and it wants that one to go away and so there's lots of kind of pecking at the window and they headbutt the glass and they go a bit crazy. So not the brightest when it comes to that, but they have lots of character and they are incredible in what they're able to feed off and what they're able to um, 
find in terms of food items and dispatch. We've, we've seen them going after very large scorpions quite regularly. So it's quite an amazing bird from that point of view. Now it's flying off a little bit, so I think what we're going to do... Senzo, can you look at that bird there on the top right of this dead tree? I just want to see, I think it's a bunting again, but let's just make 100% sure. Other side. And there we go. Are you the canaries? Ah, yellow fronted canaries, nice. And then the one to the right of the dead tree, there we go. There where the dove just landed, up a bit. Yeah, that's the bunting. So, yellow fronted canary, golden breasted bunting, and then there should be also a cave turtle dove that landed and then flew off very promptly. So, lots of birds in this general vicinity. It's quite a nice place to actually bird. What are you now that's just flown up above me here? Looks like a little ashy flycatcher that's bouncing around over there. Uh, where have you gone? There it is. Oh, just flown away. So that was an ashy flycatcher that we had, which is a common place to see them, is down in these drainage lines. I would expect us to also find lots of chinspot batis and lots of um, bush shrikes. They like these kind of areas to move around and check what's going on. Senzo, let's go quickly forward and just check. I want to see the drainage line, see if there isn't any sign of tracks going along here. It's a very steep drop, so it will be more just a kind of checking down below and seeing if I can't see any footprints down there. It's going to be a bit tough. I thought it would be a little bit closer than what we actually are. So let's actually try and find a different place to check. I was hoping that we could be able to see into the drainage just a little bit better than this because I can't see nicely at all. Hmm. Okay, well, let's carry on along northwards towards the dam. Maybe I'll get lucky as I go. I'm just a bit... It would have been so nice if I had checked the Mulawati straight away because I think I would have picked up those tracks and hopefully that leopard quicker this morning before it got into this section and even if it had come this way later it would have been okay because I would have been able to follow through with it it's just now that it's here it's very very difficult Maritza are you asking if I think the leopards are walking around in panic after what happened last night no I don't think so I think what's happened is you'll find that Tandy in all likelihood asserted herself and is now feeling very good about herself. She's now made herself known. She's defended or basically taken a territory and certainly given Shongile a strong message that she is the bigger female in this area. So she'll be feeling fine. She might have a few wounds and a, and a bit of a stiff and sore body from fighting a little bit and that might have mean that she's just resting somewhere but I don't think she's walking around in a panic. Shongila and Hosanna may be a little bit different. They might just be a little bit on the wary side now and a bit more careful about what they're doing and kind of hiding low and not really making themselves too known. So I think little Shongila and Hosanna, we won't see too much of them. I think they're going to be quite quiet and hidden for the next day or two as they try and figure out where they can go and where they're going to move. The encouraging thing though is that Taylor has found tracks for that male and female walking together. So I'm hoping that that's Shongila and Hosanna that are together still and they walking around in each other's company. It will be good news if they are. It means that hypothetically at least Shongila has got that added sort of protection of Hosanna because at the end of the day when a leopard sees two leopards it's generally a little bit more nervous of getting involved like what we saw last night right i'm going to just have a little walk around here just quickly check in this drainage section see if i can't see any tracks and while i do that, let's go across to taylor who i think is also having a similar morning to me in that everything seems to be hiding For good reason, I suspect. I don't blame these cats for not wanting to be seen today after yesterday. Perhaps they just need a break too. We're now driving Gallagher shortcut for about the 500th time this morning to try and figure out if this leopard is still around here. I'm sure it is. Just hiding about, but it's again, it's some wordy thickets. It's, we can't go in there. That's the hardest part. But I also don't want to put too much pressure on, so it's a good thing that there's all those trees here. But I'm just checking, as if I was a cat, I think I'd be quite nervous. I think I'd be sitting up in a very tall tree with lots of leaves, trying to stay hidden and out of sight. I don't know. 
where sort of to even go from here. See, so basically this leopard was, we went, we came down here and I was looking at the tracks and the leopard was just sort of sitting next to that knob thorn. It's not sitting there anymore though. No, I'm just checking. I can't hear anything. There's no more birds alarming. It could be anywhere. It could be up onto that ridge and on down on the other side. We wouldn't even know. It's so hard. Just scan back and check if there isn't anything. Maybe sitting on that, that ridge is sunning itself. Well, as we'll go towards the Voya Teller Dam, as soon as we're right here, I've already checked Vubble Road. There weren't really any tracks. And it's important to listen to what the animals are saying. So, goodness, my, another thing is my earpiece won't stay in my ear today. Nothing is going, Tristan, in my way. It's all falling apart. Um, how am I going to get through here? This looks like the place where Pierce dressed his fuel tank. <laughs> Shall we do that again? No, let's not. Mm, that wasn't a good idea coming down here. I don't know if I go along the fence. Let's try go along the fence. Now Z2 for wondering if there's any new cats in this area. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we just haven't really seen cats. Not new cats, sorry. Uh, no, no mere cats in this area. We're dwarf mongoose. Who's down here? There's a vehicle. I wonder if this is a maintenance. So no, we don't have any meerkats in this area. Unfortunately, they'd be quite nice. We've got a variety of uh, mongoose species, which are similar to them. Uh, so we see them running around. There is a car down here. I don't know who this car belongs to. Maybe they're looking for leopards. Because they also know that the leopards are all around camp. Oh no, it looks like a stuck vehicle, hey? <laughs> There's no one, no one on this car anymore, and it looks like it's been bogged down in the sand. Shall we? I hope we don't do the same thing. Uh, no, we should be all right. Maybe they just didn't go into four by four. Let's just try and angle it slightly better. Looks like it was a tractor coming in here. Do you think we're gonna get stuck as well, Seb? How much fun will that be? You ready? Yeah, it could be the sighting of there. Just watch your head here, Seb, because I'm gonna, I can't go too slowly. Go, Wendy, go! Don't let the sand get you! Going past all the rooms, there's some baboons, a go-away bird, no leopards though. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just have a leopard on the deck? I'd be happy with that. I suspect what happened is that car tried to come through here in... Uh, there's baboon... Oh, there's... Wee! Sure, <laughs> Seb, did you also not know where to look there for a moment? <laughs> they were leaping over the fence, that was quite amazing, very athletic of them, off their run. As baboons normally do, they're not fans of us as humans. Yeah, I've caught you, in the lodge, doing things that you're not supposed to do. Good run. They would always do this, they know safari times, and as soon as the guests leave camp, in the baboons go, they test all the windows, all the doors, to see if somebody was silly and didn't lock their rooms properly and well good luck if you have accidentally left a window even just slightly ajar you can forget it all your things would be scattered everywhere and they would have eaten absolutely everything but they've stopped now stay out here where there's lots of nice jackal berries that you can feed on stop going and harassing the nice people although it does make for an experience you know it's funny the first time you get raided by monkeys and baboons and it's not funny anymore after that Hmm. So how cool is that? I'm going to show you why there's no guest show. I hope someone doesn't walk out and decide to take a shower now because that would be so awkward. <laughs> but so here we're at Voyatella and look at all the cool it's an outside shower over there. How amazing is that? I have to show you this. So imagine standing having a beautiful outside shower and then you hear that soaring of Tangana as he comes patrolling by. And there's also a little bush buck walking into frame. Hello, little one. You've seen a leopard, have you? 
No, you look fairly relaxed. And Bushbucket and Ninyala are always in and around camp. You can see why the leopards go into camp so often. But isn't that nice though, being relaxing there during the day, nice little day bed. You know, sit out, sun yourself and see if the animals come past. You know, the elephants love it around here and they're feeding in the drainage lines. So that's quite cool, don't you think? I just thought I'd show you what some of the rooms look like in case you were wanting to come and visit us. It's always uh, best to have a room, in my opinion, if there is one available either on a dam or on a drainage line. Because it's, you know, favoured favored areas of the various animals. But I think everyone is out on safari, but we won't look as we go past the rooms, just in case. Oh, I've seen some awkward things <laughs> driving past early in the morning that's why we try and avoid them but no leopards and those baboons obviously you can see they didn't seem to be too bothered they weren't shouting at anything they were just running away from us because they know they'd been busted okay so we'll try to find a way out of here now so I think that that leopard is in between where the tent is and sort of that drainage line that just runs below where all that Tumbuti area is that's most certainly where that cat is and hopefully it rests nicely today, musters up some courage and then we'll be able to find them all again this afternoon. I don't know how much luck we're going to have now with trying to find a leopard. Who knows, maybe I'm wrong. What have we got here? We can hear the lapwings. Leopards are shouting, not the leopards are shouting, the lapwings are shouting. Let's see if we can look at them. I'm just trying to find a pathway that leads me back to the road again. Oh, there's baboons. And now, lapwings, I'm not promise I'm not going to drive over there and squash your eggs. I'm not an elephant. Oh, they're having a dispute amongst themselves. There's three adults there. They're obviously trying to chase away someone else. Yes, there we go. That's obviously the intruder. They're not having any of it. Charging over again. Look how quick those legs go. And hear them. They're not happy. Let's see if they're gonna go in for another chance to charge. Oh, actually, I don't know where the other one's gone now. I think it may have flown away, in fact. Good job, Mr. and Mrs. Blacksmith Lapwing. You chased the intruder out. And then there is even a little go away bird just down on the side of the dam. I think it came down for a drink. Go away bird watching its head, it's those blacksmith la- Wait, oh, getting chased now! Well, William, you're wondering if these birds can live peacefully together. Apparently not this morning, but... <laughs> Go away bird coming, he just desperately wants a drink, can't get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> go away bird, I think you need to go to another dam. Um, so yes they can, we often see them moving around in food parties together where they'll try, benef it will benefit each other, sorry, by feeding at different levels, flushing out various insects. Uh, so that helps also safety in numbers is very important. However, the blacksmith lapwings are notorious for being exceptionally territorial and they chase almost anything as we've just witnessed yesterday. We were watching the blacksmith lapwing chase a bird uh, probably about a fifth of its size the little three-banded plover away they do not tolerate anyone but we know that they have a nest around here and unfortunately they haven't had much luck with rearing any youngsters as the elephants squashed their last nest and I think there was one chick too which is very sad so perhaps that's why this lot are being so territorial but again it's winter the water's drying up Mr. and Mrs. Blacksmith lap when you should know better and that of course the animals are going to come down and drink here because there isn't many other places for them to drink from so you know you can't really blame the other animals they need to come here too that's a lovely reflection and we might as well take advantage of the reflections because I don't think we'll have any of them this afternoon I think we're going to be in for another windy day I'm afraid beautiful given up now chasing everyone not just going after all the insects on the top of the water oh, it's a bit deep yeah you don't want to get lost in there and then flying back across to the other side of the dam over there. It's seen some doves that it didn't quite like the look of. Yes, you chase those laughing doves away. I also wouldn't like to be laughed at by them. Distracted again, looking for food. Oh, 
here comes that lapwing again, one on the right, that is, keep, keeps being chased. It's just come back in. Have you not learned your lesson? Surely. Just standing there going, I'm not doing anything. I'm just, I'm coming, I came here for a drink. Oh, this is a great spot. This was the, the, the pan that was happening, you know. Now, are you taking a gamble by going in that direction? And here the others have started chirping. It's coming in very quietly though. I don't know if it's maybe a male trying to steal Mr. Blacksmith Lapwing's mate. That could be a possibility. They've both come together now. They're keeping a close eye out on this fella. You be careful. I suspect it's going to be short-lived though. They will, they're probably going to go charging in. I love how it's going, I'm not doing anything. I'm just having a little nibble over here. Yeah, they're coming closer. Even I got nervous for Sebastian the other day when he got off to put the camera. I thought, oh, they're going to bop you on the head. <laughs> Mr. Blacksmith Lapping doesn't know where to focus his attention to. He now chased all the doves away again to the other side of the dam. It must be exhausting having to protect constantly some rain. It does, this is normal though, this is just a seasonal pan, it fills up. Um, I suspect we're going to get some early rain though. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get some early rain uh, up in the north and not in the south and then maybe that will be attractive to the animals like the buffalo and then they'll come up this way. Maybe that's what we'll have to rely on. The go away birds are quite happy now though that they can drink in peace because Mr. and Mrs. Lap Blacksmith Lapwing have been distracted now. There's some turtle doves too. They're going to try and drink as quickly as they can before they get chased off. But it's a very popular dam. It's so great to actually sit and watch the dam cam throughout the day because you'll get monkeys coming through in the baboons and impala, in Yala, maybe the odd bushbuck. And then of course there's plenty of bird activity around here. There's the dam cam there. Are you finished having a dispute? What's the story? That's a strange thing to see when you're out on safari. It looks like a light, hey? <laughs> but it's not, that's the camera. Oh, yeah, be careful. I don't know what that blacksmith lapwing is doing. It just got sort of chased now. But let's carry on. Let's go see if we can find it somewhere else. Oh, Lippy, I just don't know why the animals are being so nasty to us today. It's not necessary to tease us like this, but we'll keep navigating around and hopefully find some wonderful animals to have a look at. Let's go back across to Tristan. He, he's been out the car for quite some time. Hopefully he hasn't come up empty-handed yet again. Unfortunately we have, Taylor. I was just trying to check behind the dam wall there to see where this leopard that drank at five o'clock in the morning went but there's no sign that I can pick up of it coming south so I don't know unless it's lying somewhere there close by and I just walked right past it which is also possible it does happen from time to time I didn't find any fresh tracks going southwards so I don't know I don't know where these leopards have gone and how they got there but it's a mystery at this stage and so I'm just doing another loop back to where I had the last tracks towards the Mulawati there. Just give it a bash, you never know, maybe we get lucky and they're out again and they're moving in a bit more of an open section or something like that. You never know. So that's the plan for the last little bit of drive and see if we just can't pull a rabbit out the hat so to speak and find one of these elusive five that were around yesterday. So. I mean, between all of them, they must they must be around somewhere. It's just like I said, I'm sure Hosanna and, and Shongila are just lying low. And, and then Tumba and Tandi, well, Tandi's probably all over the place trying to find Tumba. And who knows where Tumba went, because he's a curious cat and likes to walk around all over the place. So it's all just a lot of up and down all over the place at this stage. But I can tell you that Tingana is another story altogether because he came through and was found crossing into Mala Mala. So it's amazing how far he walks. Now he walks a long long way and to imagine from 
Juma Dam at 12 o'clock at night. By half past six, seven o'clock, he's already crossing to Mala Mala. Sarah, you're wondering why Hosanna didn't help Shongile last night during their fight. Well, or the fight with Tandi. Well, the simple reason is that Hosanna was probably just as petrified of what was going on as well. Plus, he was probably in a bit of a state of confusion. He didn't really know who's who. And once he realized that Tandi was not mom and that Shongile was fighting, he actually did go and lie more with Shongile. But the reason he's not helping is because he doesn't know what's going on and he's and certainly trying to keep himself safe as well and that's a little bit of the reason he's, he's got no kind of cause to go after a female he doesn't want to in, get injured himself and so he's a little bit nervous to do anything with it comes to them so that's why I just sat there and watched what was going on also he directly wasn't being attacked so he was getting off quite lightly because you know at the end of the day Tundi was not going after him she was actually fairly placid with him at that stage so that's probably what I surmise you never know sometimes they can get a bit upset and try and help out but as far as I could see that there was no way that that leopard was going to go anywhere near those claws and teeth and Tandi growling I'm sure he was just completely confused as to what has actually happened today so or yesterday should I say it'd be nice to think that he was where he would help but unfortunately like I said it doesn't quite work that way they don't actually help each other out that much and the more and more that they've spent time apart the more separated they're going to feel and the more that they are going to have sort of some level of restraint and some level of self-protection rather than actually going after others and help them but those leopard tracks that are going there are very fresh. It's the same ones that we were following up the Mulawati. I don't know. This leopard must be somewhere here. There's just so many little hiding places for a leopard around this area. Lots of little quarry thickets and places where it could be very difficult for us to actually see anything. There's little dips and troughs and drainage sections and quarry thickets. And you'll be surprised how easily a leopard can hide in this in plain sight, especially a leopard that doesn't want to be found. You might find Tandy's not in the mood at all today and she's just hiding in a thicket somewhere. But let's just do a little loop through here and just see if we don't find something. This is where the tracks are. Oh, there's just tracks all over here. So it must be somewhere in this particular vicinity. Now it's a pity that Chelapan actually doesn't have any water in it anymore because maybe that would keep them or come make them come out a little bit of this thicket and come and drink. It seems as though they're kind of sticking to this dense bush area and not moving too much out of it. But the last tracks I had are just parallel with where we are now inside on the other side of the Mulawati. So that's why I'm here just to check on this side in case they're not lying here somewhere. I'd imagine whichever animal is around is it going to be starting to bed down for the day. I don't think they're going to move around too much more. It's starting to get a bit warmer and there's a bit of wind blowing. But no, nothing that I can see. So Megan is telling me that the weather today is 16 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit but I would imagine with this wind chill it must be a lot less. So it's just got a horrible icy wind which is what we've had for the last two days so I think it's a good place for leopards to find a or a good time for leopards to find a sunny spot like what we saw the, the cubs doing yesterday or the, I suppose we can't call them cubs anymore they're growing up now sub-adult leopards the sub-adult royals like what we saw yesterday they're just lying in the sun and enjoying themselves and getting a bit of a break now just hearing some franklins they seem to have settled down now. Franklins have quite an interesting call when they when they see leopards. It's a little bit different to their normal call. So 
that call that we heard now is just their normal one but this is the last place i had tracks was just in this whole vicinity here this big tall tree just on the other side is where tracks came down into the drainage and then that drainage section is just tracks up and down all over the place and then there's some even on top here in these thickets so it's anyone's guess actually where this these leopards are they somewhere around this general vicinity hopefully this afternoon I can come back here and there'll be a track over our footprints or our vehicle tracks and we can know which ones are the fresher ones because it's a bit of a difficult one when you've got 40 tracks and you're trying to follow all of them and they are somewhat older than others it, it makes it a lot harder that's for sure okay well nothing that we can see so let's carry on Right, I believe Miss McCurdy is also, like me, having a frustrating morning when it comes to mammals. And so she's decided that she's going to do a little bit of the avian looking and look for some birds. If they would cooperate with us too, Tristan, but they're not. Except the blacksmith lapwings. Perhaps they're going to have to become my new favorite bird because that seems to be the only bird that I am able to spot. And the go away birds, and the turtle doves, and the rest of them are also hiding away. There's a nervous Franklins. Uh, let's po oh, we know it, we might as well. Let's try and poke our nose in here. Whether we'll be able to navigate the thicket, I'm not sure, but we can only try. I've not driven the same roads about a hundred times today. Where are you? Where are you, Franklins? Are you in the tree? Have you seen a leopard? Just over here? Okay. Let's just quickly scan around. Sit. So you can hear them, and you can see... Well, that's not going to protect you from a leopard now, is it? Sitting up on that small shrub. <laughs> Sitting right off the ground, less than a, a meter off of the ground. That's not going to protect you from anything. Even a snake could probably strike at you from that height. Yes, go back mm. down. Stop being silly. I think they're just tricking us. They thought, oh, there's Taylor. Let's, let's get her excited. Even when Sebastian was talking to me now, he, he was saying how long, and I heard, hold on, so I slammed on brakes, <laughs> thinking that he'd spotted something. Okay, Franklins have calmed down, so they're not shouting at anything, they're being drama queens. Perhaps they spotted an earthworm and thought it was a snake, and then, wah, panic. Okay, now we just got to find a way back to the road again. Off we go. There's the road, it winds here somewhere. Mm. Mm, no, Jake, you're wondering how far apart Tristan and I are from each other. I have no idea where Tristan is, but here's a buffalo skeleton. Hello, buffalo skeleton. Just hanging around here, not doing much. I don't know where Tristan is at the moment, but I'm just off Gallego shortcut. I, I don't think he's far. I think he's off Twin Dams, Chelepan. I'm, I think he's around their vulture's nest, so he isn't far from us at all. This is a buffalo that was eaten, I suspect. Well, actually, maybe not. Hang on, let me jump out and have a closer look. Oh, no, there goes my mic pack. I'm back here. In my pocket, you must go. Pull my jacket down again. Get all dressed. Uh, maybe this one actually just died from the drought. Because this is all stomach contents. That's quite cool. Actually, that's really amazing. See how it's just, it obviously fell down and it died. It does look some, like something was chewing on the, the front of the, the nose of the buffalo. But this is basically its entire stomach contents. Now, we did see it quite often where the lions would go past, they'd feed on a buffalo for a few hours, they'd get up and they'd go to the next buffalo because that's what it was like. I mean, we had the Gohumas at one point pass two buffalo and then go to get another buffalo. It was a sighting with Byron. So these bones are beautiful. They're bleached. I think this is from last year. Very nice. Lots of ribs. I think almost a complete skeleton actually. Hyenas have obviously been in here. There's a few bits and pieces that are scattered about but mainly most of it is here. That's so cool. Hmm. Okay I can hear roller shouting. 
We're only finding dead things today because they can't, like again, the trees and the plants, they can't run away from us. They don't stand a chance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, now how are we going to get out of here? Let's reverse. We don't want to go in reverse. We'll just go over these small little trees. Where's the road gone? It's over there somewhere. Oh no. Sorry, Wendy. Oh my goodness. Now, Jake, you're wondering as well if a vehicle has ever got stuck on Safari Live. Just watch the antenna. So, if, uh, many times. Oh, so often. My favorite one was James. <laughs> he got himself unstuck. But basically, you may remember it. He was in the Mulwati and he was testing it after we had all the rain to see if it was okay. It wasn't okay. He sunk. <laughs> that was quite funny. I don't know how we're going to get out of here now. I just keep, I'm just driving into thicker and thicker vegetation. Where's the road? It's right here. It has to be right here. <sighs> Is there a gap that side though? There's no gap. <laughs> We're trapped. Oh no. Oh man, that's going to hit us in the face. That's going to be a disaster. I'm stuck everywhere. Not stuck. I'm, I can't find a gap. I wish I could just fold the car in half and then just put it on my shoulder and carry it out because that would be a lot easier. We might actually have to go all the way back around and try and find our way out. But there's been many, many vehicles that have been stuck. I've been stuck in sand before. I don't th think I've been stuck on safari. I've broken down lots and then tried to get home. Uh, that's, that's happened, but I haven't actually been stuck in the sand or anything like that. Yeah. But let's go across to Tristan. I'm sure he's got plenty of stories to tell you about vehicles getting stuck. I do indeed, Taylor. I've been stuck on my own very, well, many times. In fact, the worst time was when I was at Chitra. That was uh, probably the worst ever. Actually, no, there was another time at Lion Sands, but I'll get into the Chitwa one first. I had just started at Chitwa, I was fairly new, my tracker was off tracking, shadow, funny enough, and he said to me, no, I need to take this road, and it was after a particularly big storm, and I had no idea that that particular road at the time would going to be so flooded. It was just completely flooded. There was n water everywhere, and I radioed him, and I said to him, am I going to be alright to drive here? He said, no, you'll be fine, don't worry, go for it. Anyway, I go through this crossing and, well, there was no crossing there, so the cold car ended up being on its diff and we had to get out and we basically had to jack in a flowing stream and we were about sort of, I would say, waist deep in water, trying to get a jack in which soft sand because the water's flowing. It was a mission. Eventually, we had to get a tractor that then pulled me out, which was quite something. So I definitely had lots of ridicule for that for quite some time. But that was probably the, the most stuck I've been with a vehicle. And then the other one that was quite funny was at Lion Sands. I, there was a section at Lion Sands, you're not allowed to do what we're doing now. You can't drive in the riverbed systems like this. And it means that if you do, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And so, the one day I found a leopard, and we hadn't seen leopard for a few days, and anyway, I found this leopard, Scotia female, and she was sitting on the inside this riverbed system. And there's a small shelf, much like what you see here. In fact, it's a bit larger than this. And there was a shelf, and then it come, came down into the riverbed. Now, we were allowed on the shelf, and that was okay. And so, this female decided that she's going to start walking so I thought well I'll start reversing and I put the car into reverse and started to kind of put my foot down to get going and well the whole bank just came in and we went plowing forward into this drainage line and now there was no other way to do it than other just to follow the leopard straight through and I ended up crossing through and I remember Ali and a whole bunch of others trying to radio me what's going on with the leopard but because we were kind of stuck inside there I couldn't actually tell anybody that I was stuck in the riverbed because I would have been in huge trouble so I had to keep quiet and get myself out quickly and then I had to just tell everyone no sorry I lost visual of her but I'll relocate and I eventually then did relocate which was fine but it was very fun because I was had to keep it on the down low and eventually I had to tell Ellie that that's actually what really happened and that's why you didn't hear from me which she knew pretty much was the case because all of a sudden I had gone from the south to the north of this drainage in about five minutes so it was quite a funny story it was very entertaining to get stuck and then the only story I've had at Safari Live of people getting stuck is Connor now I was stuck the other day briefly with Tinior, but we managed to get ourselves out so it doesn't count as being stuck if you can get yourself out of it but 
I remember Connor the other day who was a little under the weather and Connor came driving and he's an intel intelligent young lad. He's probably got more intellect than most of us but for some reason Connor had a complete brain fade as he drove the Bucky which is a 2x4 it's not a 4x4 and he saw Byron that was stuck on the other side with a bent steering rod and Connor just went driving into the Mulawati as though he was driving one Land Rovers and very quickly did he realize that the Triton or the Bucky is not going to be able to go anywhere and it just dug himself in so they had to then fix the steering rod then they had to drag Connor out it was all a big palaver but it was very entertaining just to see how it all played out not one of Connor's finest moments, that's for sure. I'm sure Byron was having a good laugh and a good chuckle about the whole situation because he came back to camp and was just laughing at Connor and saying, what were you thinking? And Connor just said, well, I wasn't really thinking, I just drove. So it was, I would have loved to have actually have been there and seen Connor's face when they got stuck. But it's amazing how many stories there are of people being stuck. I think the, the most vehicles I know of being stuck are one was on Cheetah Cut Line and the other was at Chitwa Dam and it was during the 2012 floods. Um, the one at Chitwa Dam we went down we were trying to repair the dam wall because it was cracking so we were packing sandbags and trying to make sure that that dam wall held because obviously if that dam breaks there's going to be a lot of camps downstream that are not going to last the flood that will come through. So we were packing the various places and trying to make sure that everything was okay so we were driving down and Land Rover bump, stuck in this mud just on and we'll go a different route so we got the other Land Rover and we then went there and as we were about to start Gremlin sneaking in right at the end of the show. How naughty of them. Oh, we're on quarantine, it's very empty. I thought that maybe we were going to find lots of leopard tracks. We haven't. We've just got one set of hyena tracks running across the middle road. Ah, oh, where are you, animals? Not even a bird. Let's see. Franklin's? Maybe we will find that Bennett's woodpecker. That's always quite nice. It likes to sit around. Well, there's one that hangs around in this area. Hmm. No, oh, I don't know how I feel about this morning's drive. I'm annoyed with all of the animals. I mean, how is it that we completely lose five leopards? It blows my mind every single time. We hear lions and then they're just nowhere to be found. Either we saw an elephant and that disappears. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Not even any strange insects that resemble chameleons this morning either. So sad. I checked and I'm like, oh no, I, look! My camera box is fantastic. Let me bring it up for you. I said that and then I actually didn't look on it. It's not an insect that resembles a chameleon. Let me just tilt it. It is a moth of some sort that you can see. It has taken up residence. It's lovely. It's got a beautiful shimmer to it. That's the most exciting thing I've seen all morning. Just resting. Are you resting or are you dead? Probably just resting. Look at all those hairs that it's covered in. And that's just because at night with the lights being on and around the cars, of course the cars accumulate a lot of insects. And that's the only one we've got left from last night. Well, we'll try to keep you safe. We'll try and release it though in a nice shady spot. Put that back. Yeah. Must have been like an earthquake for that moth, the way I dropped that box down. Sorry camera, my bad. <laughs> Uh, whose footprints are those? Still the hyena was walking here and then there was lots of other animals going down that way. So there's some piler. What's here? So Seb was saying that his wife Shannon was uh, she heard some piler alarming around here. So we'll have a quick squiz. I don't know where Tristan is. Still don't know where he is. Where the, what are those? Hyenas. So the hyena ran round here, going this way. They look like from very early this morning. Oh no, then they go towards Inga's. So obviously the hyena tried to get into Inga's as well, to devour whatever it could. I don't even know what the hyena was going after this morning, because the bin was completely empty. I don't know why they do it all the time. 
They're so annoying. Okay, it's not fun having to wake up every five seconds trying to chase them. I eventually just accumulated things that I could throw in the direction of the hyena instead of having to go outside of my room. It was so cold. And it just, I'm sure it was laughing at me because I don't think I was very intimidating, especially in my pink mustache pajamas with my pink top on. I probably looked very funny. But we'll have a search here and see if we can find anything that would alarm Impala, but I haven't seen any tracks just yet. But again, the, these animals will just seem to be hiding in the thicket today, having a rest. This was a favorite spot. We used to often come down here and Karula would be here with Shongile and Hosanna. Those were the days. Mm, no guari fruits either. Wahlbergs haven't returned just yet. Hi, Nyala. Let me just go slowly because there's a don't run, don't please don't run from me. I'm begging you. I just want to look at this little don't, don't hide. Please don't hide. They're so sweet. A family of three. You are very fluffy. Look at that little one. Very fluffy back and tail. They're all still, I think, a little bit on the cold side. Even mom, uh, the one that's further ahead of them. Her coat doesn't look lovely and smooth, although their coats don't normally get as smooth as an impala's coat, although they don't seem to have that sheen. The males look lovely, though. They've got those nice dark coats. Very sweet, that little one going over. And you say hello to Mom. Yes, looking back, just to say hello to all of us. Thank you for sticking around, Inyala. You have no idea the kind of morning that we've had today. And I'm glad that the three of you made it out and uh, didn't get taken by any leopards. But you better keep close to mom. Don't get left behind. Off they go, just walking. They're going to move into this quarry thicket, I think, for most of the day. Perhaps they've sensed all the, the leopard tracks and scents that are in the Mulwati, because Tristan was saying that there were just tracks left, right, and center all over the show. So they've obviously come out of the drainage line, and it's a very good spot up here, you go to the quarry thicket. And they will be out of the wind. There will also be a couple of things for them to eat. It's a nice, a nice shade. What are you going after? Are you looking for grass or little shrubs? Hard to see in the shade, isn't it? Head down on the ground. But again, they eat a variety of different things, just depending on the season. Predominantly browsers, but I have seen them grazing on the new green shoots that come around after the rain. Every, everything sort of takes advantage of that. But they're very cool. But we've been looking at a well, a female and, and some youngsters. It seems as though Tristan has also found an Inyala, but a beautiful male. Well, no, not quite. Same family, but not quite. These are Kudu, so they're slightly larger than the Nyala. <laughs> and I think Megs thought that they were Nyalas and told Taylor, so it, these are actually kudu that are busy crossing the road in front of us with their little Egyptian head bob as they walk over. They always look so cool when they do that. I like the um, the kudu's walk and gait. Here comes the last of them, slowly but surely crossing, and on to the other side. I think they are making their way towards the dam slowly. They're heading in that general direction. Maybe Wulawati might be where they end up actually south of the dam. But I was talking about my stuck vehicle story when unfortunately we lost signal. So I was saying that we had two Land Rovers stuck, got the third Land Rover stuck. Now at this stage we are over it completely. There's mud everywhere. My uniform at that stage was a khaki color which was now looked as though I'd just been dipped in chocolate because that's what I look like. I'm soaking with rain. It's, it's starting to rain again. Everybody is now not impressed by the fact that we had three vehicles stuck in a row. So we decided, no, tractor is the, the deal. Let's go fetch the tractor. So we go fetch the tractor. We grab it and we then try and pull the one vehicle. And as we do that, the whole ground gives way. Tractor, boom, sinks down. That's that. Tractor's now in, stuck going nowhere so not only do we have the three Land Rovers stuck we now got a tractor stuck so then we decide well we've got the a cruiser and a cruiser is a powerful vehicle and, and it's lighter than the tractor let's go around the front and we'll grab the three Land Rovers so we decide okay we go around we attach the Land Rover initially the Land Rover starts coming out and then bang 
down goes the cruiser into the mud as well. So we've now got four cars and a tractor stuck. And then we decided, no, this is now ridiculous. The only vehicle that's going to be able to plow through the mud and has the power to sort this out is a TLB. So we went and got a trailer loader and back actor, which is what TLB stands for, which is a massive, massive um, piece of machinery. And so we drive that in and we decide, nope, we're going to try and sort this out and we're going to get all of them out. And lo and behold, guess what happens? the TLB goes into so it then we had to wait for about two days until the mud dried to then remove all three of these Land Rovers the Land Cruiser a tractor and a TLB so that is officially the most vehicles I've seen stuck in a row and so you came from behind and it was just vehicles in a big line like this and mud everywhere and a whole bunch of very despondent men who all thought they were clever enough to get through mud and weren't so it was quite a funny story and then on Cheetah Cut Line the same thing happened also with two vehicles and tractors and I think it was two tractors, two vehicles, and then the TLB also got stuck. So it does happen from time to time, but that was a time with lots and lots of rain. So it was at least a sort of excuse for all of it, but funny nonetheless. Right, we're going to start heading home. It's been a tough morning of tracking, and hopefully this afternoon will be better. But let's go across to Taylor so she can say goodbye. Well, at least we've got an animal. Towards the end of drive, I suppose. It's the Impala, and they are slowly making their way down now towards Weyotella Dam, where I suspect they'll spend most of the day feeding along the thickets. Maybe stop and have a drink. Hopefully, the blacksmith lapwings don't give them too much trouble at the edge of the dam, as they give everybody else quite a bit of hassle. But they're very relaxed, crossing the open in the warm sun. Hopefully they have a good day and don't get chased by too many things. And Impala, please hold thumbs. Please make sure that the wind doesn't pick up too much today. I know that you would appreciate uh, less wind. And well, of course, we don't want any wind either for this afternoon's drive. One thing I can promise you I won't be doing this afternoon is chasing after leopards. I'm going to look for everything else but a spotted cat. And then if one crosses my path, well, fantastic. But it's, it's hard when you chase after ghosts. Ghosts like we do this morning, we knew that they were all around here. Just none of them really wanted to be around. But maybe the antelope, maybe the elephants will come back. Who knows, maybe we get lucky and we get to see a giraffe as well. That would be actually very nice to see the tallest animal in the world, I think. And I'm just scanning out in the distance, having a look at everything. There's lots of impala around, lots of vinyala. Maybe it's going to improve for this afternoon. But keep an eye out on the dam cam. Who knows, maybe a kitty cat comes across and has a drink and let us know. But it's been wonderful. Thank you for putting up with a quiet drive. But we'll still be around for this afternoon for the sunset safari.